the go strategy for wireless is www.cisco.com slash go slash wireless. And again, it'll break down our product portfolio here. Let's just start about our access points. Our access points, uh, again, we'll start with our premium access point, which is the Aeronet. Now again, the technology that's in the background is airspace but our product line is Aeronet because it was a purely our market name and <laughs> you know, all that. So, so the, the 3600 again uh, is the, uh, if you notice it says is a uh, four by four MIMO. So it's got four transmitters and four receivers for the spatial streams. So it can actually do four spatial streams, four transmit, four receive and uses any three of those for up to 450 megabits per second of transmission. So you actually have an extra spatial stream there on a, uh, to actually use for re redundancy and reliability. Yes, sir. Eddie, um, I don't want to take you off track. Yeah. At some point, um, could you just spend uh, a minute or two on just kind of explain what the MIMO and um, and sort of the benefits of it, and also, yeah. because I, I, I mean, I kind of understand mm -hmm. Yeah. on the front end, I mean, yeah. from the AP side. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've also been told that, you know, on the, from the client side, if, you, if they're, you know, what, they only have one radio. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to sort of see how the clients... Yeah. Well, multiple them. input, multiple output is the ability to send out the, the same signal in multiple ways, right? Yeah. To create spatial streams. Right. To create those. Uh, and again, you can... You can uh, use one antenna and you can't get spatial streaming uh, unless you do MIMO. So if you got one MIMO here, we have four spatial streams. I mean, is that pretty much what you're talking yes, about? that's what I was talking about before. But, but if, the, if, the, if the client only has one radio? If the client only has one radio, it doesn't really matter. He's going to pick, choose the best one. He's going to choose the best. Now what we can do is we, that's where client link comes in because if it's a G client, that's where client link comes in to where it will actually start beam forming the other two and hit it at the same time where that one signal looks better. That's what he'll do. That's where client link comes in. That's what we were talking about earlier. So it, it, the advantage is that one is sending several uh, spatial streams for, for Right. Clients. Yes. And yes. So the other one is if it's if there's only one client in the room, yep. then the advantage for MIMO is that it's uh, each radio is sending it at a different uh, at a different time. It's doing a little time spacing, and it can do that for multiple clients in the same room. It's not just one client. Our access points can keep yep. up with like 50 or, 50 or so clients and do that in the same room. So again, the 3600 is our premium access point. Notice it's modular and it has the capabilities of upgrading. So it's modular design, our radios and our uh, capabilities uh, allow us to open up the cover and uh, actually supporting our wireless security and spectrum analysis, the next generation of spectrum analysis and the, the chips that we'll be putting out there, these will be upgradable. So you won't have to buy a new access point, you can actually upgrade them. So these have modular, they actually have multiple slots inside of them. It uses Cisco Clean Air, so it actually has the uh, interference protection. What Clean Air does is if there's interference in a room and it sees the interference and it's the, the affecting all the clients, the capability of the clients, it will pitch, choose another frequency and tell the clients, let's go over here to another channel and drag the clients with them and make the clients change channels. Why is that important? Because that might be the only way this client can connect up. Our access points can also, uh, well, we'll talk about that when we get to another thing. Again, per, uh, Client Link 2.0 is the one where we actually do beam forming. We can actually force capabilities. iPads, we can force iPads. Remember when I, I was talking yesterday and I had the three people sitting here and I said that the client can actually talk and decide which access point's better? What if I'm an iPad and I have a 2.4 radio and I have a 5 gigahertz radio. Now the 5 gigahertz signal doesn't come in as strong as the 2.4, but 
But the, I'm an access point, and an access point can say, you know what, I know you're an iPad and you can see me on 2.4 and 5. I'm going to sour 2.4. So when a, a client looks at a, uh, the, it says, hey, I don't know which one of these to go to, 2.4 radio signal, which is really strong, or a 5 gigahertz signal that's not as strong, our access point will say, man, you don't want to go to that 2.4. It sucks. I'm really busy over there. So that interrogation that the client does back, we lie. <laughs> we, in essence, lie to that client to drive a five, somebody who's capable of going somewhere else over here giving them the best possible signal po because there's some people out there who can't go there. So our 2.4 people get the best possible service and we can drive our 5 gigahertz people over to 5. So we have the ability to do that. And I guess a little lie is not bad in some cases. I now never say that to Emily. <laughs> that would hurt me. But uh, again, it's upgradable to AC. So let's go to this thing. When you order these things, you can either order the I version, the 3600i, which has the internal antennas, four internal antennas and transmitters. That's what this is. Or the E version. The E has external antennas. Now these external antennas can look like those like there. What else kind of, what can an antenna look like? What else can a wireless antenna look like? Could it look like a, something that's on the wall like that? Absolutely. It could actually be put in a wall and painted over, and you won't even see it. External antenna. Absolutely, we can do that. So we have a plethora of antennas and different things to, to put the signal where you want it for the best possible strength. Or you could just do this and let it go everywhere. Absolutely. That's where you, it's defined. The requirement is defined by the site survey, what a customer wants to do, what their requirements are. I just... Lost my glasses, so boy, we're in trouble now. Uh, oh, oh, here they are. Yeah, yeah. Dang on things. Father time. God, he sucks. Uh, so again, uh, this is the thirty-six. This is our premium access point. This is our premium access point today. When you say upgradable to AC, mm -hmm. upgrade? it'll be a hardware upgrade. Yeah, hardware upgrade. Yes. Yeah, exactly. There will be a module that you'll take out and a module you'll put in. Yes. In the access points. Yeah. One comment on this. It's actually on the back. There is a slot for you to put in a third radio. Mm -hmm. so it already has two radios. Oh, so they already know that. Yeah. Oh, it's already been built for it. Yeah. It's already, there's a slot for you to put a third radio that's mm -hmm. AC capable. Yeah. Or uh, a dedicated uh, sensor. Yeah. Do more scanning and, you know, for yeah. like so you can use it for both uh, yeah. different types of uh, adapters. Yeah. So it's, 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 again, it's built for that. It was built, and again, the 3500 uh, 3, was originally designed that way, but, but uh, the 3600 is much, going to be much easier to upgrade. Much easier to upgrade. Yes, sir? Uh, these intelligent technologies are going into the AAPs. Is that listening a need for the variety of antennas that we offer? Uh, well, you have to understand, not everything's equal, right? Not, you're going to have a lot of different access points and a lot of different antenna needs. Think about this. If, I, if we're running a business and my business is this room, that room, and the next room over, but I've got somebody else who's working over here, another business over here, I probably don't want to put a wireless access point that's sending signals everywhere. So I might buy an external one, the 3600E, and buy a patch antenna and put it here and send all of my energy that way so somebody on the other side of this wall doesn't even know that we're there. And, that's, and, and again, if I have built people on the top, you know, as I go up, I don't have to worry about the, the you know, let me, give you, let me give you a little story here. And, and this is, you know, again, Cisco sometimes doesn't know exactly what they're doing with some of these new technologies. True story. Uh, we came, uh, when Cisco acquired Aeronet, Everybody at Cisco started getting all this wireless stuff. Every lab, everybody started putting it everywhere, right? It was a new toy at Cisco, and it was cool. It was wireless. They actually, uh, the, the people who originally built Aeronet, the people, the original founders of it, are wireless consulting. They do wireless consulting. And this is back in the 2000 time frame, 2000. And so we acquired the company and had it for six, eight months. They 
were consulted, these people were hired as a consultant to go in and talk about the future of wireless and where Cisco's development should go and all this, you know, do some high-end consulting work. They landed at San Jose Airport, they jumped in a rental car and they started driving through Ta Tasman here where we have all these pretty buildings. And they didn't go to the bu original building, they just stopped by certain buildings and everything and when they got to their final meeting in the building they said, well we obviously know you don't know crap about wireless. And he said, what do you mean? I don't know. He says, I pulled into four different buildings and got behind your firewall at four different places. And I was at Cisco when they, the edict came out from in, in, I, uh, IT, internal IT, turn off all wireless. And they were having people walk around in all the buildings looking for wireless access points to turn off. Because every lab had them. Because we didn't know, there was no security on it. They were pulling into the parking lot at Cisco and getting behind our firewall. Yeah, because people were just, it's a toy. They just didn't think, they didn't know about it. So think about it. If we were doing that, what do you think your customers are doing? <laughs> I went to the mall one time, about four years ago, I went to the mall and just opened, I took my laptop and opened it up and just to see. And I'm telling you, I could get behind all these different firewalls of all these different companies who just put wireless out there. So you have to, that's part of the, the introductory of this. You'll have external access points 3600s in certain places where you want clean air where you want all this stuff for maybe the core of your building but you might not need that everywhere you might take some uh, 2600s and put them there there'll be a, a mixture of, of access points and antenna arrays that you need to make this work there's some companies who don't want it to go outside their building they don't want somebody sitting in a car to even see their wireless right they don't I mean, because there are people who are really good at hacking it. I would think this guy's probably really good at hacking wireless. And I've got a friend who's really good at hacking it. If I saw him pull his car out in front of my house, the only way I could secure my wireless I would feel comfortable with is turn it off. He's that good. Because he could do it. He's, he's, he's really good. Now, I think I'm secure, but I would rather not try that. So it's going to be a mixture. It's not just one product, one thing. It's going to be a mixture of all these different ones that you have depending on your needs. Did I answer the question? I might have went too far, but I apologize. So, uh, our 2600s are, again, it's new. At least it says it's new. Uh, the 2600 is, again, has some of the same technologies in it. It has client link, clean air inside of it. It's three by four. That means it has three transmitters, four receivers on it. So it's uh, a little less. Again, it supports 400, up to 450 megabits of, of connectivity. Uh, and again, notice that you can have controller-based or standalone solution. You can still buy our access points with iOS, the iOS version. And they're, they're independent and they're, you know, you have to configure them some, you know, the, individually, or you can do as a controller. Now again, light is right. I think lightweight with the access point, uh, with the controllers are, are best, but for customers who only have two or three there are four requirements for two or three or four. That's all they need. You wouldn't have to buy a controller because the controller actually drives the price up significantly to buy a controller. So we have an option for that. Well, to be based on your clients, you wouldn't need this if you're none of your clients are that. Who needs it? Yeah, but how would my clients know what's what's going on? You'd have to look at the spec of your client. You'd have to look at the spec of your client. You'd have to know that. And that's the thing is, you know, that's the big thing about, we can sell AC access points, but I don't know, if, does anybody have clients for that yet? AC? AC? Uh, there might be a couple out there, but very, very few. Very few. That's why they're saying it's going to take a, a pretty significant roll of time for all the AC clients to go out. You know, they're going to do the same thing that they did before. First thing you're going to have to have is a widget that goes in there, and that's going to suck. I mean, there's nothing, nobody likes that. Who likes that? I don't. I don't like that. So, again, the 2600 is, again, uh, uh, enterprise class access point. Uh, uh, doesn't have all the, the bells and whistles and features. Uh, again, it doesn't have the design to actually upgrade for uh, AC. The 1600 is Cisco's lower end access point. And, again, it has uh, Clean Air Express. So Clean Air Express is actually <laughs> robbing, robbing a radio to get it to do clean air, in essence, is what we're doing. 
It doesn't have the hardware in it. It actually does it in software. So, and again, uh, our competitors use that as their only clean air. They don't put chips in there. So Aruba's clean air story is actually robbing the signal, the signal of the original radio to do all the other jobs, where we actually put a separate device in there to do it. So you don't lose performance of the box. Uh, they actually have, uh, well, let's go to that. So there's the access points. Let's look at the controllers. What about the outdoor access points? The, the, the what? Outdoor. Oh, the outdoor access points? Uh, we kind of don't cover those in these classes, but I'll show them to you. Uh, yeah, the 1500s, these are, that's what they look like. And they go, they're, they're for like uh, outdoor WAN. Uh, like what if you're a college campus? Uh, if you want to uh, put them, you know, the college campuses, uh, big facilities, even public sector would use these. Stadiums. Yeah, stadiums, things like that. Now, we actually have a special access point for a stadium. But that's what they would be. And again, they have clean air capabilities as well to change channels and, and all this. Yes, yes, this is Cisco.com. Yeah, just go wireless. Just go wireless. Yeah. yeah I don't want to complicate anything. I'll, I'll show you where you can go behind the scenes and find our business units uh, and everything. So our, our controllers, and again, the controllers are the brains for the lightweight access points. Now, again, there's a big push for this, and I'm, uh, I'm going to introduce the, the, you know, the theoretical, why do I even want to manage this? If you think about it, IT is... This stuff is getting more complicated. It was, it's, it's, it's not as simple as it used to be. IT staffs are dwindling and all this. Why not put this stuff in the cloud? Why not a hosted service for this? Could this be hosted? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Again, all of the technologies we had, we got from the cloud initially, <laughs> and we're going to go back to the cloud. And we've got actually a lot of controllers and a lot of technologies that we're acquiring to actually start doing this and going into the cloud because in the next three to five years a lot of a lot of customers are going to just throw up their hands I had a CIO of a pretty good sized company one time matter of fact it's been about three years ago literally said I sat in his office I just finished up a, uh, working uh, with his team and he looked at me and he said what do you think of my team and that's a very difficult and I'm, I'm as honest as I can be. Don't ask a question unless you want an answer. I'll try to, but I don't know how to water things down too much. And I told him, I said, I think in certain technologies you're way over your head. And I was specifically talking about, uh, he'd, he'd, uh, he was trying to force IT people to fill some gaps in contact center that was not going to happen. And I told him that. I said, you're... And he just, he was very frank with me, and at the end of the conversation, he told me. And he had a total of 185 people working for him. And he said, if in the perfect world, Eddie, somebody could give me a number, just a number for every time I bring an employee on, and they could, I would pay it, I'd have five people working for me. Five people and my administrative assistant. I'd have five people who are in charge of architectural design and where we're moving to, and I'd outsource every bit of it. I'd outsource my mail, which he was starting to do anyway. I'd outsource everything I did. He was a CIO. Guess what? He's going to have that opportunity really soon. They're thinking about that. Why? Because how long does the average CIO stay, keep their job? How long does the CIO last? Two years. About two years, up from 18 months not so long ago. Used to be 18 months. Their number one concern, keeping their job. Why? All of a sudden, some business leader somewhere says, we're turning in this direction. And he's the guy that has to say, oh, but we can't. And what's it look like? He's the stumbling block. Why? Because he's... 
He's working with antiquated equipment, maybe. Maybe it's because he's not ready. He's not seeing the vision. He, it might be his own fault. He's not in touch with what's going on. John Chambers had a nice quote saying, the, uh, a CIO's job is when a, CF, a CEO turns to them and says, we're going this direction, for him to shake his head yes and say, we're well prepared to do that. <laughs> and most CIOs are not. Because if the first time he shakes his head no and says, I've got to slow you down, is the day he better start brushing up his resume or his Facebook page or his LinkedIn page. Whatever he's using. Huh? The career is over, exactly. And that, that's true. The career is over. It might be over in a lot of cases. That's what's driving us to that. Because this is more complicated than it's ever been. IT has never, is, hasn't proven their, their value. And they've lost a lot of people. I mean, they're skeleton crew at best. So... Some of these controllers can work in flex mode where they could actually be hosted at a central site at headquarters with no local controllers or could actually be hosted by a, a partner or a service provider to actually manage somebody else's wireless. And that's important, maybe for your customer. How do you, how do you figure that out if it's important to your customer? You ask them. <laughs> that's not a trick question. You ask them. You find out about it. And it may, be, it may be they say, you know what, we've, we've had wireless in here for years and it kind of has worked, but this is getting too important to us and we're not getting the service we think we want. And we might be able, that might be some place that we come in with either services or our partners come in or somebody comes in with a hosted solution. So our uh, controllers, again, here's the 8500 series. Again, ideal for a service provider, large campus deployments. Uh, up to 6,000 access points. Wow! That's a lot of access points. 6,000. They don't have to be in the same building, just on the same campus. It could be, a, could be across campus. could be uh, somewhere else. But 6,000 access points. Would you just have one of these? <laughs> no, you're going to have two. Matter of fact, Cisco's got features in our access points to where you can actually do failover. It could, one one uh, access point could be controlled by one controller here. We could have another controller in standby. If this controller goes away, it seamlessly jumps over here without loss of clients. That's why this is, I mean, that's very important today uh, for the BYOD solutions. Again, the 8500, and here's what it looks like. Yeah, it's uh, in essence a closed server is what it is. A closed server. Anytime you hear the word appliance at Cisco. Yes, sir. Does that file support video and voice? Excuse me? Does the file support video and voice? Does the... the, the oh, yes, yes. Absolutely, yeah. It's designed for that, yeah. It actually is almost in dual registration mode. We have the flex controller that Cisco created uh, previous to the 8500, which was designed specifically for service providers in a more of a hosted environment. And it, again, it scales to uh, 6,000 access points as well. In the data sheets, it should say that somewhere, or maybe it says it here. Yeah. Uh, it's just a new hardware platform. It's really just a new hardware platform. Yeah, same software. Same software. Same, yeah. Uh, how, does how do they connect to the controller? Yeah. Through, uh, through a special protocol called CAPWAP. No, I mean the physical, physical cable. Oh, it's a physical cable, right? They, well, they, on a network. So you have 6,000 access points. Yeah, you're going to have 6,000 Ethernet switch ports on 6,000 <laughs> switches that are providing power over Ethernet for these guys, and your controller is probably going to be in, in your data center. Right? So it's just going to go across that. So as soon as they connect up, the first thing they're going to do is we're going to identify that it's a, and it needs to go across the network and get to that Control. controller. Sort of like yeah. Like yeah. And wire, uh, excuse me? Wireless mesh. Well, wireless mesh, again, the, with the wireless mesh, when an access point comes up, it says, oh, I see these other access points. I have no Ethernet, so I'm going to use the business, the, the, the uh, administrative wireless network to be able to connect back to it and get my configuration. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there doesn't 
necessarily need to be 6,000 cartridges yeah. going back to the yeah. That was the yeah. whole yeah. 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 It, doesn't, it doesn't have to be, but again, the m massive majority are going to be. Exactly. The massive majority. 4,000, yeah, 4,000, 6,000, uh, 5,000 ports. 5,000 ports. Yeah. But this points capable of doing Wi Fi upload. Wi Fi, yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. They have the inter interface to be able to do that. When we get the mobility services, we'll talk about in a second. But yes, we can do the, the offload from Wi Fi into our uh, IP telephony solution. Uh, the 5500 series controllers, again, up to 500 access points on these today. I think it's 500. Last time I looked it was, but let's see what it says. Yeah, up to 500. That number's actually going to go up eventually. But up to 500. It's an appliance, a separate box, depending on where you want to have that. And you buy these, like you can buy these with a, a 50, any of these, with a cert, you license them by access points. So let's say that 8,500. I can buy the 8,500 with, uh, with 300 licenses. It can support 6,000, but I buy it at a lower cost for 300 licenses. As I add access points, I just buy licenses and put it on it. So you have to license this thing. I think the 8,500 is licensed at 300, 600, 1,000, 3,000 and 6,000. So you could buy it fully loaded. Each one of those would be an incre incremental price increase. So they're licensed by the access points it will support. Uh, this is a cute little box. I like this one. If anybody want, no, well, I actually, I won't say. Christmas present would be nice, but I actually ha have one of these in the wireless kit that I been using. But this is the 2500 series. A really small device, only about like this. It's got the same software as the biggest device, but it supports up to 50 access points. Up to 50. You can buy it with five and then add licenses of five access points, five more, 10, 25, whatever you want to do, up to 50. It's got the same, same thing, the same software as the big guy, it's just a smaller version. It's a sweet little thing. I, I love these little boxes. They're cute as a button. Can yes. Does it? Yes, it does. With the new software, it does. Yes, it will support failover. With 7.3, yeah. Uh, what if you want... Th all of these boxes that we're talking about are really just a PC with our application runner, or a server with our application on it. Anytime you hear the term appliance at Cisco, it's a server that we're running our own operating system and all you can do is the configuration. You can't touch the operating system. That's what an appliance is at Cisco. As you'll notice, these look like servers. What if you just wanted to put it on your own server? What would be the benefit of just running this in your own virtualized server? And that's hardware to manage, right? What if I've already got the server out there that's doing one thing and I have enough processing power and memory and everything and li I've already bought the licenses, I could just spin this up. I could spin it up when I wanted it and spin it down when I don't. Might be easier to do. Cisco actually can sell the software for this for VMware and it uh, uses VMware. It's a virtual controller for up to 200 access points. Again, it uh, and 3,000 clients and supports multiple branch locations and all this, that, and the other. So it's the same thing on a virtualized server in this software. So when you order this, you just get a, an image. That's all you get is an image of the actual uh, controller. And this is really big in this world where people don't want to have all these appliances everywhere. It really is. It's the exact same software. Uh, there's some other interesting things. Let's go to network services and things. Oh, I got to hit this. What if you want to manage all of this? We talked about the prime infrastructure, the prime network management. Here's prime infrastructure, which is now the new product line for all of our network management. Our prime infrastructure, this is a, you know, 
the literature, let's see, it's got a data sheet here. You know, they, don't, they don't even show pictures of this stuff. That's, that's so bad. You should show at least a few screenshots. Prime is our, again, it's software. I guess I should go here. You can order this in servers, and it does all the network management in the, for our solutions. So again, here are some of the selling features. Let's move down here to where it says... Here's your requirements. It it's, uh, requires VMware uh, version 4.1 or 5.0 of ESX or ESXi. Uh, different sizes for a different number of devices. Again, for this, uh, there's a chart down here. The small virtual will support 2,500 devices, and these devices could be uh, an access point or a, control, a controller, all these different devices. So this is our network management platform that would manage all of our infrastructure. Anything prime is something that I think you should sell your customer. Just don't mention our old network management, and you hope that the people don't remember it. Because I'm telling you, our network management history has been brutal up until we got prime. Mm -hmm. and MSC mm -hmm. and ABC application. Yeah. So yeah. All, all these things are just software products, right? Absolutely. So they're not an appliance of any sort. No. So uh, the customer can use their own web Well, we have, we have requirements for the servers. Uh, and in some cases, we will say you have to use this type of server on it. A Cisco. Cisco. Yeah, might be a Cisco server for, in some cases. In some cases, and again, it, 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 it varies. I've seen some things that we say, as long as it meets these requirements, you can load it on anybody else's server. And then there's some certain things that we say, guess what, it's got to run on a Cisco uh, C220M3. That's the server we support it on, depending on the, the, the thing. And, uh, and I don't agree with that. I think it should be, if we're going to sell the software, let's sell the software, but I'm not making those decisions. Yes, sir. All, all that stuff can run on VMware? Yes, yes. Absolutely, can run on a virtual machine. Yeah. But we do sell appliances for ICE also. Uh, we do sell appliances for ICE as well. Yes. And again, in this in this model that we've talked about, we sell the appliances for the wireless LAN controllers, or you can s put it on a a virtual machine. Right. So we give the customer the option, and that's really important in this this world. There are a lot of customers who have just came out of that independent server, independent appliance thing, and they don't want to go back <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. And I, I agree with them totally. Because that rack space that they just, they don't want to fill that rack space up that they just relieved with virtualization. They want everything virtual. Probably the number one question as a customer as they go back, oh, this is, this is a server? Yeah. Next thing out of their mouth, does it virtualize? Yeah. Now you can say yes. You can say yes. And that's really important. For, uh, yes, for all again, you can get a virtual machine for uh, for this. This runs virtually. This is all it sells. It we sell software here. The uh, the mobility services engine actually is virtualized as well. Yeah. Are these standard benchmark results? Excuse me. Are these standard benchmark results? Uh, yes, yes. They're what we support. Now let's think about this. I'm telling you this. Cisco's the most conservative company I've ever seen. There, believe me, the, the engineering documents on this, if we say that this, if it says it does 2,500, I can guarantee you, if we didn't stop the licensing, the platform you put this on will probably do 5,000. It would support it. We're so conservative. For an example, when communications manager, when we engineered communications manager, and on an individual server, it would only, we said we would only support 2,500 phones on an individual server. I went down into, into Texas with some friends of mine and everything, and we were, they were running 6,000 phones on the box. They, again, hacked the code and everything and put 6,000, just to see if it would work out, and it would. But Cisco would only support 2,500 because they want to keep those issues out of there. So we're very conservative in that, that method. So when you see we are a great engineering company, sometimes too much of an engineering company, I believe. We need to take a few risks, but they, we don't. Because we have a lot of customers that this, we don't, you know, a black eye to us is a lot of millions and billions of dollars, potentially. So, 
So again, this would be a, uh, the network management platform. Again, this manages, it manages everything. It manages uh, switches, routers, uh, all our devices out there. This would be our network management platform uh, that we have. We used to have a software package called uh, NSE that's actually, this is replacing. So or NS, what, what, yeah, NSE, yeah. We, absolutely, absolutely. So they could still manage their applications and all that. This would just be an insert. So on the, just click on it and it would go. And all of our network management has been that way. So the question was, will this integrate with HP OpenView or more enterprise solution? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because it's out there and it, it does a good job. Uh, other services that we have out there. God, I keep pressing that wrong button. The Mobility Services Engine. The Mobility Services Engine does two things for us. It does two things for us. First of all, it does exactly what it says. It tracks mobile devices. So think about this. Uh, what if you're running a, uh, a healthcare facility that specializes in dementia patients? Right, people with Alzheimer's and all this. So you have a retirement home that your niche, your, what you do is that you take a lot of people who've been diagnosed. Now they may be in different stages of dementia. Right, so they may still, you know, they've been diagnosed and they're not so bad, they still, but after they've been, they've gone so far in that you could actually put an RFID tag wristband on them and actually put a wireless network around your your uh, building facilities. So if they do wander off, we'll get an alert and you can go get them. Now we live in North Carolina. Now we have things called silver alerts there. Silver alerts are someone who's wandered off. Matter of fact, there's a facility down at Southern Pines who has, who specializes this in a retirement community who actually has this installed where they actually have this where they can actually track where everybody's at and if they go outside of the wireless network it automatically says Eddie's went outside the wireless network the last time we saw him was at exactly this location he was wandering off next to the lake so somebody can go get him yes yeah, we're gonna launch that with one of our wireless customers they want to put the RFID trackers on equipment in their building. Mm -hmm. So if anybody decides to walk out of the building with a piece yeah. of equipment they're not authorized to, yeah. they'll, they'll be the flag, so. Yeah, uh, in hospitals, right? Hospitals do the same thing, and it's, it, you know, there's a lot of different reasons for that, but absolutely, so they need a mobility services in. Yeah, that's so that's what it does. Now, you remember, uh, some of the things that, when you do that, and you have to be realistic with the customer, this uses triangulation. And I, it was a long time ago since I went to school, but a triangle's got how many sides? Three. So that means that at any one place that you're at, you've got to be seen by three access points. So your density is going to go up in your access points. So you might have to do another site survey and everything if you've had a network and you want to change it. So you might have to do an old site survey because you have to see it from three. So they can actually pinpoint you. I think uh, we can pinpoint them down to like nine feet, three meters or something like that of where this device, this person device, whatever it is. And we can actually start tracking it. We actually have another software package where you can actually track it and watch it go to different places so you can track it. Yes, sir. Uh, I might want to uh, be able to give some more color. Yes, about. yes. The acquisition that we did mm -hmm. uh, not too long ago was a company mm -hmm. called ThinkSmart. Mm -hmm. And they do uh, location analytics. Mm -hmm. And so with uh, local uh, services engine mm -hmm. and our APs and some of the software from ThinkSmart. Uh, there's a lot of uh, applications in places like airports um, mm -hmm. uh, where you can actually see the flow of, um, of how passengers and customers mm -hmm. are going through. So you can do human factor studies mm -hmm. to say, there's a lot of people trying to go through this one gate at 6 p.m. on every day. So let's, so, so that's the- Let's open more security things or whatever, yeah. Yeah, so they've done that. <coughs> Just recently, I, um, we're, Cisco is working with the, uh, Holland America, which is a uh, cruise line. Yep. 
Uh, maybe you guys are familiar yeah. with it. Um, so they're looking for, uh, they have to basically have these things called muster stations on mm -hmm. their, all their mm -hmm. ships so that if there's an emergency, all the people have to be essentially in these. Yeah, that's where they come from. Yeah. Uh, and um, so one of the applications that they're doing is having tags on uh, the crew, mm -hmm. so if there's an emergency, they can actually see on a screen in wherever, let's say yeah. London, yeah. of a cruise ship that's out in the in the ocean, in and the where ocean. the crew members are. There's 15 of these ships, 15 yeah. uh, on this fleet, so they can actually see that all the crew are out of the engine room or wherever, based on uh, basically choke point and yeah. uh, and art. Our, you know, mm -hmm. APs Technology, and exciters yeah. and our body tags. Yeah. So I thought that was a really pretty cool yeah. application. Yeah. Yeah. You can also create business opportunities for you. I mean, for example, if you sell this to a shopping mall. Yeah. You, Absolutely. Can, you can say how many people with smartphones okay. went to work. Absolutely. Specific. Start doing analytics on that. Mm -hmm. And, they, and they, the, the phones don't necessarily need to associate with mm -hmm. the AP. They don't have to actually have the connection mm -hmm. because the APs will Count them. They'll yeah, count them with their beacon, right? Yeah, when they beacon, they'll count them. The, like a lot of these technologies, you know what the limitation is? It's between our ears. We have to be creative. We have to be creative. You know, we're, we're Cisco. We're supposed to be the experts on what the capabilities of technologies are. And we're supposed to be able to talk to a business person and say, here's your business need with all this technology. Because they're a business person, they're not supposed to have all this expertise. So these creative solutions that we have go only go through contact and dialogue with business leaders about their business processes and what they're doing and what their requirements are. And then we in the back of our head say, wow, that would be a cool thing to be able to do this. It's the limitations between your ears. It really is. It's between your ears. We have, to, we have to talk to our customers and find out what they're doing and then be creative with them about these solutions. The technology is generally not the limitation. And you know what? They're willing to open up their pocketbooks. I'm sure that cruise line, cruise lines don't like to spend money, a lot, a lot of money and everything. They've already spent a lot of money in a big ship. But there's some value somewhere in that for them to be able to do that. Guarantee you. So we have, to, we have to open up. So the first thing this does is track these mobile things. The second thing this does, it's an API platform so you can integrate any other application into our wireless solution. This is the server that opens up any other application that you'd want to do to actually bring in any, uh, into our solution. So any other application, whether it be a, a different radio type network, or anything like that, this is the open API platform for it. It doesn't talk to, this talks to the controllers for everything. It pulls all the information about controllers and devices and everything. And if you want another application to use that for any way, shape, or form, this is the open API platform for it. That's what its job. So it's two things. It does mobility and it's an open API platform for this, for the, our solution. If I put my glasses down one more time, I'm just, can't see them when I walk away. Jeez, I'm laughing. The advanced location, and I think that's the, even the software you were talking about, the capability of doing that, because if you look at what it says, is, uh, gives, uh, this is where you can actually track things. You can actually use that to do historical tracking and all that with this, this solution. And again, it's just software. It requires a mobility services engine for this. So, that's the products. And again, that's the products today. Next week, we may have different ones.